Okay, so just to review, um, when we create a proof by contradiction, we start with assuming that what we're trying to prove is false, and then we reach a contradiction, and then we know that the proof thing we had to prove is actually false or true, depending on how you look at it. Okay, so we're assuming the opposite of what we are trying to prove. We consider that almost like a given. Okay, so we treat that almost like a given. So if I know that NT is equal to OT, what else do I know? Angle N is equal to angle O, because I have to. Good, yes. So I would do a little, um, I would do a little NT congruent here because all our theorems use congruent and I would just stick that in and I would say equals implies congruent, okay? And then I can say angle N is congruent to angle O. Why? Because, because. When two sides of, I mean, when two sides are congruent in a triangle, opposite angles are congruent as well. You tucked in that in a triangle, right? You need the in a triangle. So in a triangle, congruent sides. Congruent opposite angles. So then I know that, oh, well, now angle the measure of angle N equals the measure of angle O because congruent implies equal. But then I can say. Um, measure of angle N is not equal to the measure of angle O. That's a given. So therefore, NT is not equal to OT. Why? Because contradiction steps two and three. can't have angles equal that are not equal. I have a question. Yes, Levi. Um, why did you change the equal to congruent in the first step, but then change the congruent to equal in the second step? Because in our theorem, it's not equal size, it's congruent size. Okay. It, it, it's really a fine line. If you had done in a triangle equal size is like congruent or equal angles, I think they would be okay with that because it's all in equal. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know. Right now, our it's it's a, it's a detail. It's not that important. Okay, got it. So let's try another one. In the accompanying diagram, GHF is not isosceles, and GIF is congruent to GIH. Prove segment GI is not immediate. So one of the things you're expected to do is to take a situation and translate that situation into prove a given and prove. So I have to now decide what's my given and what do I want to prove? So what would my given be? Segment GI is a median. Uh, that's what I'm proving, right? No. I want to oh. I want to know this. GHF is not isosceles and GIF is congruent to G. That would be my given, and then I'm proving GI is not a median, right? So now I have like conventional what I need to know. Yes. G I G H F is not isosceles. Angle G I F is congruent to G I H. And prove G I is not a medium. So now I can set up my proof. So we're going to start with G I is is a medium. Okay. 
And I'm going to do this one flow proof just because uh, to show you a different one. So GI, you can do it on the table if you prefer. Oops, is a median. It's not going to say given, it's going to say assumption leading to contradiction. So what do I want to do from there? Anything? Any other ideas? Do I want to take a given? Do I want to conclude something from median? And by congruent. So okay. Good. So if I could show that I is not the midpoint, that would help or Let's say GI is a median, then what do I know? I is the midpoint, right? That's really the only thing I can conclude for median. Okay, so what are we thinking at home? Any ideas? And what to do with this point? Levi? Um, if you know that Fi is congruent to HI and um, angle FIG and, well, no, GIF and GIH are congruent and GI is congruent to GI, then you can prove that the triangles are congruent, which would mean the angle FGI and HGI are congruent, which would mean that it would be an altitude, but all, I mean, it would be a- Here, Back up, back up. Stop right there. If I need congruent triangles, you still there, Levi? Yeah, never mind. sorry. Um, Then GF and GH would right, be congruent. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, you were kind of going, it's true. Everything you were saying is true, but you're gonna get really complicated and you don't really have to. If I know, um, let me just do this. Put this in there. If I can get these triangles congruent, right? Triangle one congruent to triangle two, then all their parts are congruent, which means that this is congruent to this, which means it's isosceles, but it's not isosceles, so therefore the whole thing is for nothing that it's wrong. <laughs> See, if, if, I, if I follow this and I say it's a median, then I can get congruent triangles. If I get congruent triangles, then these two sides are the same. But they already told me they're not the same. So therefore, whatever I started with had to be false. So why do you that Because you're trying to get a contradiction. You want a contradiction. I will get a contradiction because I will show that those sides are congruent, but they told me it's not isosceles, so they can't be congruent. Yeah, it's counterintuitive. It's a little, it's a little stretches your brain a little bit. 
this is a given. And then I have um, this, and I'm going to put my, where's the GI? This can go into GI over here. That's reflexive. And those three parts, this is a side, this is an angle, this is a side. I now have triangle GIF. It's congruent to triangle GIH. I had side and side. But if that's true, then GF. Congruent to GH, CPC to C, You guys would put the, if you're doing a table, you would put the steps there. Right. Yeah, you always tell which steps contradict is like here I have isosceles and not isosceles, both pointing at I have two steps that are in direct contradiction. Like here the whole world is blowing up because I'm saying those two things are both true. It can't both be true. Right. So how many steps you have to 10, it would probably be nine and eight. Yeah. Are we okay? Fun? Are you having fun yet? <laughs> Where is it, Sean? He's not here either. We should buzz him. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on that? Basic, basically. Oh, the explanation is you would say since there was a contradiction in what we assumed, the, the conclusion must be the GI cannot be a median. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't have questions, we will go over the proofs from last yesterday and last night. Okay. Um, and if you have questions at any point, just now these are, this is how I did them. I am not lying when I say to you, I do not make an answer key for proofs. My way is definitely not the only way. And sometimes it's not even the best way. So if you have another way, feel free to let me know. Oh, which reminds me of something. Hopefully we'll have time. If not, I'll bring it up tomorrow because it had to do with um, something we did the other day. Thought about it and 
while I was sleeping. Okay. So I think this one you probably got done in class yesterday. We had parallel lines, so we have congruent alternate interior angles. A C parallel to A. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay. So we had C D D and oh yeah, this one and this one. And then we had BE bisect. So here we go, Rona, BE bisect CF. Then I know this is congruent to this. I don't know that this is congruent to this. That's what I'm trying to prove. Okay? BE bisect CF. Oh, you're right. I'm wrong. Thank you, Rahanji. Yeah, you're totally right. B E by thank you. That was completely wrong. B E bisect C F. B E is being the bisect or C F is being bisected. So do I have that wrong then? I think I have it wrong then. It's C D. Is that? Yeah, C D and F D. And then it's going the angle angle side, which is what I had. And then I said CD, so this is wrong. So this is my proof from my notes, so that one's wrong. So this should be uh, BD. BD is Angle, angle, side. Angle. Did I use vertical? Yeah. Angle, angle. Right? Okay. So then uh, it's still angle, angle. Oh, no, it's angle, side, angle. Yeah. Yours is angle, side, angle. Yeah. If you used um, the other angles, these, this is congruent to this, then that would be angle, side, angle. But you didn't use the vertical angle. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be vertical angles and those other angles would be angle side angle. If you did, this is congruent to this and this is congruent to this and this would be angle angle side. So yeah, lots of different ways to do it, okay? Ah, such a great question. Such a great question. So if I don't have parallel lines, I don't know that alternate interior angles are congruent. The lines have to be parallel. Because I can have random line, uh, let's say it's not parallel, right? So now if I have a transversal here, these are alternate interior angles, but they're not congruent. Yeah, so you definitely need the parallel lines. Great question. Any other questions? All right, let's take a look at the next one. So this one was uh, just whether or not you remember to do this angle subtraction theorem, your proof might have been a lot longer, or at least two or three steps longer. So I have isosceles with base CE. Why do I care about base CE? Because that defines what my base angles are. So I get those ACE is congruent to AEC. And BCD is congruent to DEF that was given. And so then I have the whole and the part so that I can get this little part here, right? And then I had FG bisect CFE. So I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. And then I have a reflexive side. So I can get those smaller triangles. Congruent. 
through it, and then I can get midpoint, which implies median. Levi, just unmute and ask a question. Sorry, Toby. Um, actually, he. He was uh, telling me because you couldn't see my hand raised. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just had it. No, it was fine. Um, I was just wondering what's the difference between angle subtraction postulate and angle subtraction theorem? Another great question. Anybody want to answer that? Isn't the postulate like being Right. So the postulate's kind of saying, um, if I wanted to use the postulate, let's put a one and a two here, okay? The postulate says angle one plus angle two makes up the whole. So I'm really talking about one angle there. Angle, sub, angle addition theorem says if I have a three and four here, if I know that angle one is congruent to angle three and angle two is congruent to angle four, therefore angle B, C, E is congruent to angle D, E, G. That would be angle addition theorem. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Super important. Okay. Are we okay with that? All righty. We had M is the midpoint of YR, so that gives us congruent segments. We have a perpendicular giving us right angles, and all right angles are congruent. Um, then we got our last angle again by angle subtraction theorem for angle side angle, and then we got CPCCC to show isosceles. We haven't done any HL. So HL, the only thing you need to be careful of with H hypotenuse leg, other than it's a regular, um, you know. Euclidean proof, the normal way we do it is that you have to say you have right triangles. It's not sufficient to say you have right angles. And that's not me. That's not New York State. That is universal rule. Okay, so you have to say you have right triangles. So you just got to kind of put a little bell in your brain that goes ding, ding, ding. You still need, if you think of it this way, you still need three pieces of things. Well, you might still use right angles. It has to be right triangles. So you can't just have the hypotenuse and the light. You need to say you have right triangles. That's the only quirky thing about it, though. Okay? All right. Moving on. This one was a little longer. Tiny bit. Um, so we had an angle bisector. And we got pretty easily our first small sets of triangles by angle side angle. We had perpendicular, so then we got um, the right angles were congruent, subtract the parts, and I get the other part, which gives me another set of congruent triangles. And then I can get those parts by CPCCC. Good. I did mine differently, but I actually realized after I did mine that it actually, I could have done it simpler. Oh. Mine was actually 15 steps. Okay, so what I, did you do that was different that made it longer, Levi? Um, first, I found that the triangles RST and um, RWT were congruent. And oh. then I found that RTE and RTF were congruent. And then since the um, segments RS and RE and RW and RF are congruent. I use segment addition. Oh, okay. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Well, long, well, not wrong. <laughs> okay. And then we had um, 28. So that one wasn't bad, I don't think. Uh, we had midpoint and perpendicular, so we had right angles, vertical angles, and then we got the triangles by angle side angle and corresponding parts of the triangle that are congruent. Not too bad. And then this fun one, I think this was very similar to, uh, we had a formative proof, it might have been exactly the same. <laughs> but anyway, supplement 
sense of congruent angles are congruent, very helpful there. Otherwise, you have to go to 180, substitution, subtraction, wah, wah. And this was a nice one if you remembered segment subtraction theorem, you didn't have to work too hard. So we had a given set of angles and sides, a reflexive angle. These are harder to see. You have to work a little harder when they're overlapping triangles. So if you tend to be of that nature that you need to redraw them, redraw them, okay? Because that is a helpful technique. Um, and once I get the triangles congruent, I can use segment subtraction theorem to get the parts I need. Say again. They're not, they're parts of these, they're not, this is not a part of the triangles I got congruent. Now, if you got these triangles congruent, then they would be a part. But do you see that those, I can't, I don't know this. So this could come like this, right? I could still have, well, that would be true because I would have congruent triangles, but I don't know that this is congruent to this unless I know that this part is congruent to this part, which I get by the congruent triangles. I, I can't assume if I have two, triangles that are congruent, right? And I'm just going to draw it like this for simplicity's sake. And if I have a segment intersecting one side and a segment intersecting this side, just because this whole side is congruent, I don't know that this part is congruent to this part unless I know that this part is congruent to this part. Does that make sense? And the part, this, these are not parts what we consider to be parts of the triangle. They're parts of parts of the triangle. Does that make sense? So, so I can't do a part of a part of an angle or a part of a part of a segment because they're not corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. The, the only corresponding parts we have are the three sides and the three angles that make up that triangle. I can't have pieces of parts, put it that way. Okay, but isn't RS and RQ? RS and RQR, yeah, that's why I wrote it. So because I have, if I'm understanding it correctly, I know that this hole is congruent to this hole. And then when I get the triangles congruent, I know that this part is congruent to this part. So then I can conclude the remaining part of that segment is congruent. Yes? Okay, good. And then we had a little bug. Segment bisector, reflexive side, 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 side. Pretty straightforward. You can say bisector. Yes. Oh, that's it. Okay, so we're going to do a little angle Sudoku for fun tonight. Yay. And some indirect proofs. These should not be horrible. Like I said, indirect proofs, just because they are weird, they tend to be a little more straightforward. They don't tend to be as complicated. Um, well, I'm saying that I think each one I got about nine, well, between eight and 11 steps for the ones I did. So it's between eight and 11 steps. So they're kind of like the ones we did last night in terms of complexity, probably, but they're not any harder than that. Okay. Um, Questions for me on anything we've done? Oops, I don't want to do that. I wanted to, I wanted to stop the recording.